There are a couple of ways to think about this question, but I think if you're in any way nervous about how this works, the best thing to do is just graph it. Let yourself see a picture, and that way maybe you can understand better what they're asking you to do because you actually have a picture of a graph. So open the calculator, and I am gonna graph it using the f of x. Um, you don't have to, you can just change that f of x to a y if you want, but I'm gonna do it because I wanna show you one other thing at the end. So I'm gonna do f of x, and that equals, just make sure everything is as written, x minus six times x minus two right, um, times x plus six. And there it is, there's our graph. Now we're asked for g of zero, which um, is, since we're shifting it up, we're just moving this thing up. So what I would wanna find is like, where is f of zero? and then change that. So you can see we have a, a zero here, here, and here, but those are the wrong kinds of zeros, right? That's where y is equal to zero. We are being asked where x is equal to zero, right? Notice the zero in parentheses, that's where the x goes. So let's get rid of all those. And we can kind of see that if we scroll up, oop, we're gonna find it eventually. A lot of scrolling. Oop, there it is, I think I passed it. Yeah, okay, here we go. See, and the one good thing that Desmos does is it's going to kind of specifically draw your attention to the most important points, the intercepts, any intersections, vertexes, things like that. So there it is, 0, 72. So let's write that down. So f of 0 is 72. And then if we're moving that four units up, just think what would happen, right? This entire red graph is going to shift up four. So we'll add four to it. So 72 plus four is 76. And that is the answer. Okay, so I mean, I think that that's the most straightforward way to do it. Um, you might understand kind of the from just memorization and, and dealing with translations in school that if we're going to move it up four, it's going to look like this. What we would have is uh, g of x equals, and this is why I did the g's and the f's before, is you can do this, uh, f of x plus four, with the four being outside the parentheses, outside the parentheses. If it's inside, that's a different kind of shift. It means it's moving left and right. But if we just add or subtract four on the outside, then it's moving up and down. And that's what they're telling us to do here. So it might not look any different, kind of the way I, I showed it here. But let me see if I can like elongate it. This is the one problem with Desmos is I can't sometimes figure out how to how to zoom in one direction like it doesn't kind of let me the way i want yeah it's not working um but basically if i turn the red one off the blue one is there and now once again it's going to do what i wanted to do which is highlight the point that uh, is the zero um if they wanted another point like g of one or something that's a different story we can kind of trace this thing uh, you can see my finger here kind of tracing it, and that might work in a different situation where we're asked for a different point. But um, honestly, if they're asking for zeros, we're in good shape for any sort of graph because zeros are going to pop up on Desmos. Um, it really does bother me that it doesn't shift the graph the way I want. But one thing you can do is um, you can hit this button, this little... Um, wrench at the top and adjust the label manually. So you do have that option. Um, but there you go. If you look at it, you are hopefully going to be very sure that you're doing the right thing because it's a visual representation. So that gets into our overall idea with math, which is try to see all the things you're doing. Try to show your work, see graphs, do it in a way that's very visual so that you're not falling for any traps for these kinds of questions.